So I want to talk about what I think is a bombshell article that was recently published in the New York Times. This is a piece by Jonathan Martin, and it's titled, Stop Sanders Democrats Agonize Over Bernie Sanders' Momentum. Now, there are two implications embedded in that headline. The first is that there's a group of Democrats who are firmly in the camp of we need to stop Bernie. The second implication is that they're terrified because out of all of the declared candidates, he's the front runner. So there's a lot that you can take away from this article just by reading the headline. But if you go deeper, it tells me that there is actually a concerted effort to stop Bernie Sanders by members of the Democratic Party establishment. And we're going to get to some specific paragraphs here that allude to that. But first of all, when we talk about these Stop Sanders Democrats, the reasons they claim they're against Bernie Sanders is because they don't necessarily think that he is best suited to defeat Donald Trump, or they're worried that him winning the nomination will catalyze a third party challenge by someone like Howard Schultz. But for the most part, what we need to take away from this is that there are powers within the Democratic Party establishment that are dedicated to stopping his momentum. And they are actively trying to concoct ways that they can undermine him. So let's get to some specifics here. So Jonathan Martin writes, The discussion about Mr. Sanders has to date been largely confined to private settings because, like establishment Republicans in 2016, Democrats are uneasy about elevating him or alienating his supporters. The matter of what to do about Bernie and the larger imperative of party unity has, for example, hovered over a series of previously undisclosed Democratic dinners in New York and Washington, organized by longtime party financer Bernard Schwartz. The gatherings have included scores from the moderate or center-left wing of the party, including Speaker Nancy Pelosi of California, Senator Chuck Schumer of New York, Minority Leader, former Governor Terry McAuliffe of Virginia, Mayor Pete Buttigieg of South Bend, Indiana, himself a presidential candidate, and the president of the Center for American Progress, Nira Tandon. So let's just stop and try to take in what was just confirmed in this article. There are previously undisclosed Democratic dinners where the subjects, what to do about Bernie and party unity has come up. And the individuals who partook in these discussions include Democratic Party leadership, Center for American Progress president and neoliberal Neera Tandon, and Pete Buttigieg, currently officially confirmed to be conspiring with leadership to undermine Bernie Sanders. Now, if you want to be overly charitable here, you can say, well, look, they're talking about two things. They're talking about, one, what to do about Bernie, and two, how we can foster party unity. So maybe it's the case that they're talking about unifying behind Bernie Sanders because it looks like he's going to be the <laughs> But also, it could very well be the case that they're talking about how they're going to be able to cultivate party unity after they fuck him over again. Now, for me, I mean, I'm sorry, but I am a lot more cynical about the Democratic Party because the Democratic primary in 2016 was disgusting. It was disgraceful. They overtly rigged it against Bernie Sanders. Now, I'm not saying that they fixed it, that it was impossible for Bernie Sanders to win, but what happened was the DNC colluded with Clinton's team to give her an unfair advantage. It even screwed over Lawrence Lessig, Martin O'Malley, so it wasn't just Bernie Sanders. So after seeing that they did that, after hearing the DNC's lawyers admit that if they truly wanted to, it would be legal for them to just unilaterally choose the Democratic nominee in a smoke-filled room, I'm going to interpret this in the most cynical way possible, because history dictates that that's what we should do. So Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Pete Buttigieg, Terry McAuliffe, Neera Tandon are all meeting behind closed doors to discuss the matter of what to do about Bernie Sanders. Wow. Wow. It's... Honestly, not surprising, 
But you'd think after 2016, when they were exposed, they'd be a little bit less brazen about trying to undermine Bernie Sanders in such a public way. Now I know why these dinners were previously undisclosed. And to think that Pete Buttigieg himself, who is a presidential candidate, who I think would want impartiality, he's meeting with Democratic Party leadership, talking about this as well. What's so special about Pete that he gets to be included in these conversations? If you're going to genuinely have a good faith argument about what we can do to foster party unity, wouldn't you want to include the other presidential candidates, Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, even Joe Biden, people who actually have a real shot at winning, but they chose to bring in Pete Buttigieg. That tells you a lot about him. Now, another thing that is discussed in this article is superdelegates. So, it is possible that since there are so many candidates running, that could splinter the vote among the establishment centrist wing of the party, which would give Bernie Sanders a plurality. But it very much could be the case that Bernie doesn't get enough votes to secure the nomination in the first round. So they talk about this prospect of what would happen in the event a second vote came up and whether or not they'd rule out choosing someone other than Bernie. And it seems like they don't want to do that because obviously if you just steal an election away from Bernie publicly in front of everyone, you essentially guarantee a Trump victory. So it seems like they don't want to do that, but let me read to you what they specifically say. Quote, if I had to bet today, we'll get to Milwaukee and not have a nominee, said Leah Daughtry, who was neutral in the 2016 Democratic Party primary. Now, this is someone who is a DNC member. The reason she theorized is simple. Super Tuesday, when at least 10 states vote comes just three days after the last of four early states. After that, nearly 40% of the delegates will have been distributed and she suspects carved up among Democrats so that nobody can emerge with a majority. Unlike Republicans who used a winner-take-all primary format, Democrats use a proportional system so candidates only need to garner 15% of the votes in a primary or caucus to pick up delegates. And even if a candidate fails fails to capture 15% statewide, he or she could still win delegates by meeting that vote threshold in individual congressional districts. Should no bargain be struck by the time of the first roll call vote at the 2020 convention in Milwaukee, such as a unity ticket between a pair of the leading delegate winners, the nomination battle would move to a second ballot. And under the new rules crafted after the 2016 race, that is when the party insiders and elected officials known as superdelegates would be able to cast a binding vote. The specter of superdelegates deciding the nomination, particularly if Mr. Sanders is a finalist, is highly unappetizing to party officials. If we have a role, so be it. But I'd much prefer that it be decided in the first round just from a unity standpoint, said Senator Debbie Stabenow of Michigan. So it seems like if they're going to undermine Bernie Sanders, what I get from that is that they're going to try to do it in a covert way, hence why they're doing these private closed door meetings. Because again, if you truly want to defeat Donald Trump, and I believe that most Democrats do, not all of them, but most truly want to defeat Trump, then you can't just take this person who has the plurality of pledged delegates and snatch it away from them and give the nomination to someone else. They will lose in perhaps a landslide election and guarantee that Trump is elected four more years. So, this would make them incredibly delegitimate, which you'd think that they would already be delegitimized after 2016. But nonetheless, if you do it in such a brazen way like they did, or like, like they could potentially do, that could be harmful. So it's clear to me that we need to not necessarily be as worried about the second round superdelegate vote, even though it should still be on our minds. We need to be more worried about the more covert ways that they're going to try to undermine Bernie Sanders. And... Now there's literally a group of Stop Sanders Democrats discussing what to do about Bernie, including Democratic Party leadership, Pete Buttigieg, Neera Tandon, and it's disgusting. If you genuinely are concerned about the prospect of party unity, you've got to stop with stuff like this. But just keep in mind, there's a group of Democrats who are trying to actively undermine Bernie Sanders. And that is really disgusting, but is it surprising? Not at all.
Not at all. It's exactly what I expected because this was my initial prediction. Seeing how they undermined Bernie in 2016, are they going to do it again? I think so, but they're going to do it in a different way. They're not going to limit debates, for example. They're going to do it in a way that we wouldn't expect because, I mean, lightning never strikes the same place twice, right? So why would they do it the same way? They're going to think of new ways to screw over progressives. Now, what could be something that happens is Bernie Sanders just overcomes the rigging because he's so overwhelmingly popular now. He has the name recognition. He's the front runner. So he could trump the field and this may not matter. But nonetheless, in the future going forward, regardless if he wins or not, these are the things that Democrats have got to stop. And it's why we have to change the makeup of the party leadership and the establishment because it's disgusting. They're not about democracy. They're about protecting their own. They're about protecting the status quo. And it's morally reprehensible.